You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Ahead tonight, a new study claims shutting down the coal strip power plants could create jobs. So we're going to explain. Plus how President Trump's promise to close the southern border could have impacts on Montana's farmers and ranchers. That story's ahead. But first tonight, it happens every year. The bird migration to Freeze Out Lake and every year it's a treasured event to see. Freeze Out Lake near Shoto draws tons of thousands of visitors to its waters every single spring. MTN's Andy Curtis takes us there to show us how our feathered travelers stop there before heading north for the summer. I'm Andy Curtis with MTN News here at Freeze Out Lake between Shoto and Fairfield. And usually the scene behind me would be filled with migrating birds coming up from the southern uh, coastal states, migrating north up into Canada. But that's not the case right now. We were talking with FWP officials earlier today and they were telling us that because of the late cold snap, a lot of the water is frozen completely solid on top and that's causing problems for the birds flying over. You see, they think the water's open, they come down close, find out that it's ice, and then they take back off again and they go out in search of other open water, usually finding it farther from here. And that means that the bird numbers aren't typically as strong as they usually are here. That also means the amount of people coming out to bird watch in this incredible part of the state uh, isn't as strong as well. But we're hoping that with some warmer weather coming in uh, this next couple of weeks that that might change, even though we are on the tail end of the migrationary period for the birds heading up north. Now, after talking to FWP officials, they were also telling us that this is such a great part of the state for the birds to land because it's the first stop they make on their way up north and because of a lot of the agriculture surrounding the fields or the, the ponds, that is, it's a good place for birds to stop, rest, and eat. For MTN News, Andy Curtis. All right, Andy, thank you so much. The weather impacting so many things this year. Whitefish fire officials, in fact, are saying that bone dry grass and wind is what fueled a 40 acre brush fire that burned buildings and a vehicle. The brush fire got out of control just last night on KM Ranch Road. It burned down a mobile home and a vehicle, several other outbuildings. Multiple agencies in the area responded and officials say it serves as an important reminder. We do need to use some extra caution this time of year. The fuels are very uh, receptive to fire right now, especially if there's the sun on it and a light, a light breeze. And it only three to five miles an hour will make a huge difference. It doesn't take a huge wind. And fire officials say create a defensible space around your home. In fact, do it right now, all in preparation for this year's fire season. A former Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's deputy is back in jail after violating bail conditions. Virgil Wolf is facing 80 counts of child sexual abuse. Court documents say Wolf called police from the residence of a victim, saying that he tried to harm himself. When deputies arrived, Wolf told them he knew he wasn't supposed to be there. His bail is now set at $500,000. The Missoula man accused of driving the wrong way on Interstate 90 during a high speed chase appears in court. 29 year old Kevin O'Quist facing felony criminal endangerment charges. Prosecutors say he drove into a restaurant, then drove the wrong way onto Interstate 90, almost hitting several cars. His next court appearance is next week. A Billings man will spend 15 years behind bars after meth, cocaine and illegal drugs were found during a traffic stop. 31 year old Alexander Grable was sentenced today for this 2017 crime. Billings police officers found one and a half pounds of meth, 26 ground, grams of cocaine and illegally owned drugs or uh, guns, I should say. They also found a number of ammunition cartridges. Grable had a prior felony conviction. Of course, that prohibits him from possessing firearms or ammunition. A discrimination discrimination case in Yellowstone County involving a transgender woman is now in the hands of the Montana Human Rights Bureau. Former Deputy County Attorney Eleanor Maloney says she was denied gender affirming health care under the county's insurance plan. The Bureau says the county violated the Human Rights Act's insurance provision by denying treatment of gender dysphoria. Maloney also says she was denied coverage for therapeutic counseling. She resigned from her position in June of 2018. The county denies it discriminated against Maloney. The warm weather is creating some challenges for crews plowing roads in Glacier National Park. It usually takes about three months to plow the Sun Road and it can be open obviously for the whole summer. But this year there's some concerns about avalanche danger. 
preventing crews from working as quickly as they usually do. After plowing pavement, preservation will follow, and each year crews, they have to be pretty careful and watch those conditions. If it's a really warm day, they've got to come down because there is too high of an avalanche danger for them to work. On the other hand, we could get a blizzard, and you know that would also dump a lot of snow up there. They'd have to go back and redo some work. The Going to the Sun Road probably won't be open before June 21st. You might remember last year it opened on June 23rd. Montana's 2020 race for governor already getting pretty crowded. Today, a Kalispell senator is throwing his hat in the ring. State Senator Al Oshevsky is the third Republican to officially run for the seat on the Capitol steps. He kicked off his campaign today. Also in the race, Attorney General Tim Fox and Secretary of State Corey Stapleton. What we have done so far with health care in my last three sessions here, along with my compatriots, is that health care is profitable for some, free for others, and it's very, very burdensome for most. And that's got to stop, and we're going to fix that. So far, no Democratic candidates have officially emerged for the race for Montana's governor, of course, in 2020. The Belgate, Belgrade athletic director, who was accused of mishandling funds, will return to work. Rick Phillips was placed on administrative leave in February for allegedly paying tournament workers thousands of dollars in cash. The school district decided to reinstate Phillips during a closed door meeting, but then they declined to comment on their decision. Phillips says he returned to work today. President Trump's threat to close the border with Mexico could impact agriculture trade between the two nations. Overall, a closure would create an economic impact of about $600 billion. But agriculture groups say trade between the two countries is good. While Montana's wheat and barley is shipped to Mexico, so are other products. We have serious concerns about closing the border and what, what that could do to our cross-border trade with Mexico. Mexico is a billion dollar export market for us. It's very important. We export a lot of products to Mexico that, quite frankly, Americans find less desirable. We can sell, you know, tongues and offal and things like that uh, at a premium in the Mexican market. It's important that we keep that free flow of commerce open. But we're very concerned about any disruption to trade, whether it's through tariffs or closing the border. In 2017, Mexico is the third largest egg export market for the United States, worth about $19 billion. A year-long study shows cleaning up contaminated ponds and coal strip could create hundreds of high-paying jobs. The study indicates cleaning up coal ash ponds could provide the necessary jobs needed for coal strip survival. The study, done by the Northern Plains Resource Council, the group says that the study offers coal strip a bridge to the future. We are very excited about this study because it does show that coal ash cleanup is a huge job creator. And it is also a way to permanently remediate groundwater pollution for the use of agriculture and the greater uh, coal strip community. And currently in the Montana legislature, there is a bill to allow Northwestern Energy to purchase coal strip power. So if passed, it would shift cleanup liability to Northwestern customers. Now, the Department of Environmental Quality says it is addressing the con contamination. And of course, they are reviewing information provided in that report from the Northern Plains Resource Council. I'll still to come on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news. After a wolf was shot and killed near Cook City, tourists are taking the issue to heart. We'll explain just ahead. And now that spring is upon us, Bob McGuire tells us if we get that spring-like weather through the week, your full Montana forecast, it's coming up right after the break.